My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Back on Asbo again today. Back on Asbo. Um, I've got all the, um, uh, the calipers that were painted in the last video that you've seen. They've just been dangling in the corner for days whilst I've been working away on the mill. Uh, which is basically there. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm adding all the masking out and we're gonna stick them back on the bike, route all the lines and do the master cylinder as well. Um, they turned out all right. I just used some of that Hamrite Smooth aerosol paint. It's not VHT paint or anything else. Um, inside, we've just masked off where, obviously, oh, hello, where the pistons sit and the, the mating surfaces for the galleries. All the rest of it, got it. Yeah, they're quite respectable, they'll do. Well happy with that. Um, I just need to get all the masking off and get it all back together again. Um, the milk is looking really, really good. Uh, I thought Jamie was down this weekend um, to wire it all up for me, but yeah, that's next weekend. So I've got time to spend on Asbo and we can carry on with this front end swap. Um, I also, I'll show you later on, but I've got a, um, a swing arm off a Mark 1 1200 Bandit. Come on. Get out. Thank you. Um, yeah, for Mark 1 1200. Uh, the, the swing arm that I got previously, well, that was actually off a of 1250, which is why it's got the, the um, caliper carrier for the rear brake. Whereas the, the setup that I need is the Mark 1 Bandit, which has got like that tie bar. I don't really much care for the tie bar look, it has to be said. But, you know, at least if I go that route, everything is a straight swap um, and it just means I can run that bigger back back tyre as well because um, I think it's going to benefit from it. Apparently they are lovely when you do it but we shall see. Um, I just want to get all this lot back together for now. Come on. Masking tape is never this sticky. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Right, so I got this off eBay. Brake Masters Motorcycle Brake Kits and Service. Um, nothing special about it, but it does have everything that I need. You do get a little um, thing of rubber grease as well, but I've already got a pot of that open. But it's like bleed nipples, uh, the boots and covers, couple of washers, and obviously the seal kit as well. So that's all good. Happy with that. Um, I've just cleaned stuff up. I am going to be replacing these. When it comes to the build, I've just, I've at the end of it on a Scotch Bright, just to, I want to see what it looks like. If it's like, if I was to replace them with stainless, um, they were just black, but they was horrible and manky and everything else. So they've just had a quick clean. Pins is all good and stuff as well. Um, the pistons, they are quite discolored, and in some places they're starting to go on the edges. So when we come to do the proper build, these are going to get swapped out with something. I might even make some on the lathe out of stainless. Because that's about as easy as it gets to make, really. Apart from maybe a washer. Um, and one of the springs is fine. The other one is kind of discoloured as well. So I'd be getting replacement springs anyway. Um, but for now, these are perfectly serviceable. It's just that that one looks a bit mankier than that one does. <laughs> there you go. Right, let's um, have these open and get some seals in. Right, these are square seals. It doesn't matter which way around they go. Sometimes they're like a trapezium sort of shape. Um, but these are square ones. So that's all good. Uh, so that's them. So that's a seal. That's that. And the same for the bigger jobbies. Right. Start on you because you're the right way around.
I got one of those bags full of rags. This came out of it. Who's going to buy anything that looks like that to wear it? <laughs> <laughs> right, before everybody starts going potty about, oh, you're using rubber grease. You should be using brake fluid to assemble it. The thing does come with a jobby of red rubber assembly grease. Um, it's just I'm not using it because I've already got a pot that's open. Um, however, for the pistons, we are going to give them a little bit of a smear of brake fluid just to help them on their way, basically. See what I mean? Some of them, it's like it's just started to go, um, which, you know, is to be expected. But a set of stainless ones, you're never going to see them. Um, but they will last a little bit longer, so I think I probably am going to make some. Um, everyone's got their own way of sticking these things together. This is mine. It's not a how-to, but the seals normally go in with uh, red rubber grease. And I'll just put a smidge of, of brake fluid on just to help the, the piston get past the rubber seal and send it home, basically, like that. Um, you know, brake fluid's not the nicest of stuff. Do you really want to be covering everything in, in brake fluid um, when you've just painted it? So that's all good. So in here, there should be um, some O-rings. We have a little bit of luck. Come on. This is where I rip the packet and they just go everywhere. <laughs> Done that before. There we go. So these little jobbies are gonna go on like that. A bit more rubber grease. Actually, we'll stick that on the other side. Um, you, that one. Yes, you are. It's just this has got a recess in it. So that'll help them not to shift about when I do it up. So, with a little bit of luck, he's going to go on like that. Come on. And we shove a bolt through. Not putting anything on the bolts. Right, they're only on loose at the minute but they will get torqued down once I've got the caliper back on the bike. Um, just because it's easier to do when it's held that way. Right, you eight mil. Yes. And do that. Back on there. Well, that do. Right, one down, 
want to go. Right, sorry about Jack in the background. You can probably hear him sawing wood up. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, my cable for the microphone. It did show up. There you go, look. I'm not using it and I'll tell you why in a second. Have a look at that picture. That's what I needed. A TRS to TRRS patch cable. Apparently this little grey jobby, if you're gonna stick a Rode microphone um, onto your phone, then essentially you need you need this patch cable because you, you stick it into what would be the headphone jack. However, this patch cable basically turns it from thinking it's a uh, a, a set of ear you know earphones or whatever into a microphone. The only trouble is when you open the box, that's what's in it. Um, can you see that? Uh, I'll see if I can zoom in. Yeah, that's not the cable that I wanted. <laughs> This cable, you get a standard with the Rode microphone anyway. But the uh, the thing that makes it different, if you're having troubles, if you see the grey plug, um, where are you? If you see the grey plug, it's got three black bands, it's a four-way pin, whereas this one's got two, and it's a three-way pin. It's that grey plug that basically tells it it's a microphone and not a headphone. So they had a shitty email off me. <laughs> Don't worry about it, we will get it sorted. <laughs> I do want to use that microphone because it will cut all this nonsense out. Right, what's next? Right, so these are the these are the pads that came with it. I've got a ropey set and I've got a brand new set. I don't understand that one at all. Um, I have got another set of pads coming. They're not here yet. Um, but I just want to shove these in at least one of the calipers. Um, actually, I might even stick both in and just, you know, bleed all the system through and everything else. I just want to make sure everything lines up. So, let's make sure the hands are clean. made my um my spaces yet so this is just for fit up and for testing um Right, so this needs to be uh, where are you? Forty newton meters. Forty. Oh yes. 
This is my only snap-on tool. So it's brilliant. Mostly because it goes down real low as well. This one here is supposed to be tainted. The one that holds the... Um, uh, uh, unlock. Uh, sorry, the one that holds the brake pad, the, the pin. That's supposed to be 20. There we go. You can lock it and everything else as well. It's great. Wrong one. Alright, so calipers is on. There's a match to see in there. Need to even paint it. Let's do it. Let's give it a clean. Well, I'll pull it apart and then give it a clean. <laughs> <laughs> and clean um, basically I shoved it through the ultrasonic just for like five minutes and then some of this brake and clutch cleaner just down the board that's all nice the paintwork is a bit bleh, but I don't really care <laughs> it's all gonna get done when it gets built basically right now all I want is an operational master cylinder that's safe and works properly so Happy days. Come on, come out. There we go, another pot of red goo. And this is a service kit. So again, eBay special. <laughs> Nothing amazing about that. Oh, come on. I had to borrow these off Dan. He's next door. The circlips that I've got, basically the, the ends are too big to get that stupid circlip out. So, I need to treat myself to a set of them, I think. Um, but we get a new circlip, which is nice as well. Right, okay, so, red goo. Hopefully, and the whole thing gets shoved down the ball. stupid circlip has to go on top. I do need to get myself some of these.
probably supposed to use dry PTFE lubricant spray jobby stuff. I haven't got any of that. I've got grease. <laughs> Only a little smidge, keep the weather off. Right, how does that go? That way? Yes. Yes. That's basically that service. Um, like I say, it's nothing special. I haven't gone potty with paint or anything else. Everything's just had a clean and um, obviously new piston seals and stuff like that. So that'll be fine. As far as the reservoir goes, um, I'm probably going to need to swap the hose out and do something a little bit different. I'm tempted to have this to mount straight to the top yoke because I'm making my own top yoke anyway. Oh hello, just do some goo in there. What's that like? No tails, no nicks, no anything, so that's all good. To be fair, these last years anyway. So that's fine. Could do with a little bit of a clean. <laughs> so with the top yolks, which I'm going to be making myself, um, the yolks are going to drop down here, the top of the forks is going to sit on this line here. So I'm tempted to do something sort of like that because I'm going to split it on the back side rather than at the front, I think. I don't know. I'll just incorporate something like that for the, for the reservoir, so that'll be fine. We'll have a dodgy bracket between now and there. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Alright, so he's on there for now. Um, we're obviously going to have to change, change the hose, but I don't know, we could, I don't know, we could even have a little bracket like that, couldn't we? Then you've got a switch gear. We'll figure it out. Right, hoses. Right, see so if these fit. Banjos and washers and two hoses. Basically, I'm going to run like a race system. Instead of having one line that comes off here down to a splitter that you then feed into each caliper, we're going with the race setup. Right, so the lines are going to work. Um, I'm going to need to have some sort of a cable guide on the back of the bottom yoke which there isn't provision for at the minute, but I can soon drill and tap in the back of it and I'll make up like a like an M shape, you know, just like have a block and drill holes in it, slit it and tap the middle just to, just to keep these where they need to be. This distance obviously is never going to change. Um, so when you're going under braking, it's only this bit that's moving up and down. It's not because it's not an upside down knee, but I want to space it nicely down the bottom here because obviously we've got the tire sitting there as well and I don't want anything rubbing. So they are going to need to be mounted somehow, which is easy enough. That's a real quick project on the mill, but I haven't got a working mill yet. <laughs> but again, that's something I can do quite easily. Um, so everything lines up and fits, which is sweet. And then it's just this bit at the top. Hmm. 
So I reckon something like that would be quite good. Yeah, and keep it low. Top of this will be in line with the top of the yolks because obviously the yolks are going to drop down. So that could be quite good. And I can just machine like a little standoff lug on here that we can just screw into. And that way I can keep a really short piece of hose as well. So that would work. All right, cool. Right, it's only by mucking about and doing dry fits and trying it and taking it off and changing it and sticking it back on again and blah, 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 blah. But I ever actually get stuff to fit right. <laughs> I'm not one of these that just goes, oh yeah, 20 mil up and to the left, that'll be fine, job done. <laughs> I have to goof about like this. We've got the switch gear, um, which is obviously gonna need to clear as well. This switch gear ain't staying when I build it, but just for test purposes and to get this on the road and have a hoon and check out geometry and suspension and stuff, I'm just gonna run with this. It works, it's fine. It's just grubby and looks horrible. Um, but on the final one, we're gonna have some nice banky gear. And this is obviously gonna need to clear it. So I might change the design of the top yoke a little bit. I'll probably muck about in CAD and just change the one that I've got slightly and see what it looks like but I don't think it's gonna be a biggie. Either that, or I could just do a little sort of bracket with a jog in it that comes off the back of this um, clamp. But I just think that would look a bit, meh. I don't know, we're just gonna to have to play with it, aren't we? <laughs> but anyway, at least I've got brakes. I know the lines are gonna work. I know what I need to do to root them, and that's it, that's all good. So we can move on. I've had a word with Jack. He's going to take the tyre off that, that rear rim because he's got a machine next door. So we can have a look at the swing arm and stuff. Um, but I really need to get the mill done so I can start on this top yoke. That's going to be something. And I also need to figure out some sort of instrumentation. Um, where's the bandit clocks? Hang on, I'll be back. Right, these are the bandit clocks. I ate them. <laughs> With a passion I ate these. It's built like the Tamar Bridge. Massive, massive bracket on the back of it. And obviously this one all screwed up underneath the top yoke. Well, I'm running that top yoke. I'm running something different. So we're gonna be going with, in the final build, it's just gonna be like a single clock. Um, it'll be a GPS one as well. So there will be like a little pocket sorted on the, the top yoke just for the receiver and everything but there'll be a single um uh, a single speedo which i'm probably going to sink into the top of the headlamp so on the yokes all i need is like the the light indicator jobbies however we've got to test this so and i can't i mean the speedo's useless because i've done away with the speedo drive so i need to go gps so i have been thinking you might not like this bit <laughs> What I'm probably going to end up doing is using my phone. Um, I could probably reuse that instrument, you know, the, the warning lights and stuff. So your neutral, your turn signals, all that sort of stuff. Just because, you know, if I suddenly lose oil pressure, I'm going to want to know about it. So I've got these two mounting points here. Um, we're still going to be running in an ignition key. It ain't going to be up there though. I'm going to need to screw all that away somewhere because in the final build, it's all going to be um, M unit. And I want to leave the front of this completely free and clear. So that ignition is going to have to go someplace else. Um, what I'm thinking of doing just for now is to make up a bracket with like one of those quad lock things that your phone can just click onto. I've got a couple of apps on my phone, which I used when I did track days back in the day, which um, race time, I think one's called. But uh, you can use it like on the road as well as you know on a racetrack and stuff. But it picks up on GPS and it gives you your speed. And you can have maps on it and it plots your routes and all sorts of other stuff. You just do it all on your phone. So what I might do is have a quad lock so I can just stick my phone on it for now. And then we'll have these lights off here or if I can find a cheap set of, you know, I just want the turn signal neutral or like that kind of stuff um, and we could just mount that anywhere if i can find a really nice set then i might include it in the yokes that i'm going to make 
I don't know, I need to go grubbing about. If anybody's got any links to just a little instrument cluster, which is just the warning light, drop it in the comments, because I, I haven't even started looking. So um, any suggestions you've got would be gratefully received. But then I can get you know, get a set, get dimensions, include them in the design for the top yoke, and uh, we'll be away. So that's it, anyway, that's where I'm leaving it today. Um, not a biggie, but I am quite glad I've got brakes again, and it's all gonna work. <laughs> That was time well spent, wasn't it? Um, and we will see you again on the next one. Laters!